Ana hayır. Hello everyone. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Hey, man. So, we uh, got this. Hello. Ashima. Hello, sir. Sir, actually, you are not properly audible, sir. Can I audible? Internation is not. Hello. Yes, sir. Now I'm audible right now. No, sir. You people in court? No, it's better. No, it's better. Okay. So, this session will be recorded or not? Yes, sir. Recorded. Okay, fine. So, this is uh, lecture number five, fine, of iron making class, and the topic is uh, direct. Reduced iron DRI or spons iron. And basically, this topic is about rotary kiln process. So basically, we know that we basically produce iron by blast furnace technique. Oh. Blast furnace process, you can say. But blast furnace process have certain limitations, like very high uh, installation cost, high maintenance cost is there. It is not like uh, we have to pay a lot of money. To install a blast furnace, it is so huge. And another problem with blast furnace is we need coke, right? Without coke, we cannot make iron by using blast furnace. So we need to install a coke making plant, right? And we need to use only a special kind of bitumen coke. So these are the major limitations of uh, blast furnace iron making. So that's why people thought of to make iron without using blast furnace. So they thought of alternative route of iron making that is called some alternative process they are going to use. Huh? So that particular iron comes out is called DRI. Because from DRI basically because that iron is in solid state. Hmm. It is direct reduced iron that is in solid state. And there are certain other techniques, uh, other alternative route of iron making called SR process, melting reduction process, where also we get molten iron. But this topic is about solid state iron making. That is basically called spons iron or direct reduced iron. Why it is called spons iron? Because if we want to see the structure of that iron, it completely looks like a sponge. Having lot of porosity, right? It is in solid state and having lot of porosity. And some textbook have mentioned like this kind of iron. It looks like honeycomb like structure. You have all everybody have seen the honeycomb. Hmm, how it looks like lot of designings will be there. Lot of porosity will be there, right? That's why it is called DRI huh? or spons iron. Hmm. It is light in weight. Hmm. The question will be like why it is having lot of porosity because the product is in solid state and due to removal of oxygen from the iron Fe2O3, it leaves behind some porosity, right? Because Fe2O3 becomes Fe at the end. Hmm. That means the oxygen is getting removed. So it leaves behind some porosity. Hmm. Because you know oxygen will be in form of cations. 
sorry in an ion form right because it is an oxygen o2 minus okay but uh, iron is cation right so i anions are bigger than cations fine and if anions will remove so it leaves me in lot of porosities <coughs> and the problem with spons iron is what they have high surface area if we expose the spons iron to atmosphere it again reoxidize to fe2o3 so that's why there is a term called hbi hot briquated iron so after making spons iron we make it a briquet huh? a particular design shape we can make it we convert it into a particular shape huh? by pressing it so that the porosity will get closed and the surface area will get reduced huh? that is called hbi hot briquated iron you have to remember so if we want to store any spons iron it's better to store in form of hbi hot briquated iron hmm. if you store the spons iron like that it will reoxidize again hmm. so now uh, okay so this uh, spons iron or dri we can produce by two techniques one is called coal based process one is called gas based process right so this kind of classification is on the basis of what on the basis of reducing agent what kind of reducing agent we are going to use hmm. right because iron making is a reduction process we are doing reduction of iron ore to iron right so either we we have to use any gases reducing mm -hmm. agent like natural gas basically because natural gas contains methane propane butane those things right or we can use coal as a reductant right so if if we are supposed to use any coal as a reducing agent it is called coal based process and if you are using natural gas then it is called gas based process so many many different different techniques are there hmm. if i would like to give some example like best example of coal based process is the rotary kiln iron making no? and gas based process is the matrix process hmm. but today's topic is about rotary kiln iron making no? actually rotary kiln iron making is very famous in india also right lot of plants are using this kind of technique rotary kiln iron making because there is a kiln it is a kiln means it is a uh, cylindrical kind of kiln hmm. it is the length of the kiln is basically uh, 60 to 80 meters or it may be 40 meters it may be 60 meter depends upon the capacity hmm. basically they use 40 meters or 60 meter kind of kiln uh, length huh? and diameter of the kiln will be maybe 4 meters hardly Four to six meters, four or five meters, like that. Hmm. It is completely cylindrical kind of vessel. You can imagine a long tube. You can imagine kind of a long tube will be there. The tube length will be like sixty sixty meter or eighty meter or forty meters. It depends upon the capacity. And the diameter is four meters, for example. Huh? Made up of simple uh, and a uh, refractory lining will be given. That is called castable refractories. Basically, and that particular kiln is inclined at an angle of like two degree or two point five degrees. So, if you incline the kiln at a degree of two point five degrees, for example, so what will happen? One end will be in a higher position. One end will be in the lower position, right? So, the position which will be in higher position that is called the part of the kiln which will be in the higher position that is called the charging end. The raw material will get charged from that end. Sir, you are not portion of the kiln which is in. I'm not audible. Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Up to how? Up to how much you have got it, sir? That higher part. That one. Okay. Okay. Fine. 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 Okay. Uh, anybody is having? Uh, can anybody share anything? Like, uh, can anybody share uh, the rotary kiln furnace? If you have. let me check 
Okay, fine. Uh, anyways, so the higher part is called the part of the kiln which is in the higher position that is the charging end. The raw metal will charge from that end, right? And the portion of the kiln which is in the lower position that is called discharging end. So finally, the sponge iron will come out from that end, right? So what are the charge materials? The charge materials are basically either iron or lump or your pellets. And you need a reductant that is basically non metallurgical coal, and you need a flux that is dolomite. So these are the three main charge materials huh? iron ore in form of lumps or pellets, reductant in form of non metallurgical coal, and flux in form of dolomite. These are the main raw materials we are charging from the charging end. Sir, non, huh? sir, non metallurgical, non -metallurgical coal. Spent low grade coal or what exactly exactly yeah yeah low grade coal but you can say low grade coal see we we can have two kind of coals no metallurgical and non metallurgical metallurgical coal is that kind of coal which can be only converted into coke and that coke can be used for blast furnace iron making right but non metallurgical coals do not have a property it cannot be converted into coke even if you heat it it will not give you coke right but metallurgical coal can only be converted to coke. You understood now the point? Yes, sir. Obviously, non-metallurgical non -metallurgical coal is plentily available. That is the point. That is that is the main advantage of this process. Huh. The the main advantage of uh, making iron using this rotary kiln method is we can use non-metallurgical coal here, which is cheaply available, easily available, and and it is plentily. Oh uh, yeah, obviously. Plentily available and cheaply available, right? It is an abundant amount. Uh, that is the point, main point. And we don't need any kind of coke here. Directly, coal can be used here in this process. And also, some, yeah. Ah, mail karoge, kya? Mail karo, mail karo, Try to show the negative better. Milk, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Okay, fine. So, you people understood, and there is another kind of uh, charge material called char, C H A R, char. That is actually unreduced coal, all uh, unreacted coal, basically. Better, it is not unreduced, it is unreacted coal basically. Huh? The coal which still contain carbon. Hmm. And what is the product? Product we are getting basically the sponge iron and char. Hmm. Char is non magnetic, but sponge iron is magnetic. So we can use a magnetic separator to separate the char out of this sponge iron. Right? Anyways, uh, let him share the image. I'll show you. <clears throat> and another point you have to remember is this why this is called rotary kiln because that is a kiln which rotates very slowly, like uh, in one RPM or two RPM maximum. You can imagine the rotation speed is very low, one RPM revolution per minute, hmm. or two maximum two RPM, and that kiln is. Uh, in an inclined position, always you have to remember why because it is inclined in position and it is rotating. That's why what happens the raw materials will move from charging and to discharging and due to gravitational force. Hmm. Due to rotation and gravitational force, the raw materials move towards the discharging end. Huh. 
and from the discharging end we basically have a burner and we also blow uh, some line we can also blow some more particles and in in between the kilns we have an arrangement for supplying air normal air right because you need air for combustion hmm. and you understood the same reaction will happen same reaction which happens in the सर तो उसमें हम लोग जो मतलब और जो चार्ज कर रहे हैं उसमें सर आ, मतलब उसमें तो कम होगा इससे इसमें ज्यादा चार्ज करना पड़ेगा क्योंकि इसमें हम लोग लो ग्रेड और यूज कर रहे हैं आ, अच्छा क्वेश्चन तो ज्यादा चार्ज ज्यादा चार्ज कम चार्ज ऐसा नहीं है सर उसमें डेंसिफिकेशन करना पड़ेगा ना इसमें बेटर क्वालिटी नहीं 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 डेंसिफिकेशन की बात ही नहीं है इसमें ना कुछ इसमें डेंसिफिकेशन की बात नहीं है वही सेम लंप यूज कर सकते हो और बोल रहा था सर जो प्रोडक्ट आता है उसमें मतलब हॉट मेटल आता है पर इसमें डीआरआई में वो आ, मतलब वो स्पॉन्ज एरन आता है तो उसको हम लोग डेंसिफाई करते हैं ना करके उसको ब्रिक्वेट्स या पेलेट्स का शेप में लाते हैं उसका मेन रीजन है तुम्हें कोक यूज नहीं करना पड़ेगा क्योंकि ब्लास्फन एस आयरन मेकिंग में कोक मैंडेटरी है समझे बिना कोक के ब्लास्फन एस रन ही नहीं हो सकता बट इसमें क्या है तुम डायरेक्टली कोल यूज कर रहे हो डायरेक्टली और वो भी नॉन मेटलॉजिकल कोल बाकी मेटलॉजिकल समझे अभी यस सर नॉन मेटलॉजिकल कोल नॉन मेटलॉजिकल कोल में एच कंटेंट ज्यादा रहेगा मॉइस्चर कंटेंट ज्यादा रहेगा समझे ये सब प्रॉब्लम हो पाए वो रेटल मेटल कंटेंट ज्यादा रहेगा बेसिकली और कंपेयर करोगे मेटलॉजिकल कोल से और यहां पे तुम डायरेक्टली यस सर कर रहे हो तुम्हें कोई कोक मेकिंग प्लांट इंस्टॉल करने की जरूरत नहीं है अगर तुम्हें ग्लास वाले स्टार्ट मेकिंग करना है तो तुम्हें कोक मेकिंग प्लांट इंस्टॉल करना पड़ेगा जिसमें कि ये सब एडवांटेज है इसका ठीक है यस सर अच्छा उन्होंने तो पूरा मुझे पीडीएफ भेज दिया है लग रहा है किस पूरा रिपोर्ट तो कौन सा पेज होगा मुझे किस पता अरे टू थर्टी फाइव में है थर्टी फाइव से टू थर्टी फाइव ओके तो देख पा रहे थर्टी फाइव ओके
स्लो है नेट बहुत खुल ले रहा है एनीवेज तो रोटरी किलन प्रोसेस मुझे लग रहा है समझ में आया होगा तुम लोग अभी ना दैट मींस वी आर गोइंग टू यूज ए रोटरी किलन हां व्हिच इज ए सिलिंड्रिकल काइंड ऑफ वेसल और सिलिंड्रिकल काइंड ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर हैविंग ए लेंथ ऑफ 60 मीटर और 40 मीटर और 80 मीटर एंड हैविंग ए डायमीटर ऑफ 4 मीटर बेसिकली व्हिच इज इंक्लाइंड एट डिग्री ऑफ 2.5 डिग्री एंड इट रोटेट्स एट अ वेरी लो आरपीएम दैट 1 आरपीएम और 1 आरपीएम और 2 आरपीएम मैक्सिमम एंड देयर इज अ चार्जिंग एंड देयर इज अ डिस्चार्जिंग and there are many blowers in between the kiln where air is blown into the kiln and from the discharging end also we have a burner to provide heat energy hmm. and some people are also inject in some industry are also injecting lime from the discharging end uh, to control the sulfur content in the iron and you have to remember there is a rotary cooler also huh? in that particular process there is a rotary cooler the rotary cooler will be at the discharging end that means okay fine let me tell you one important point here this dri process of sponge iron making is basically done at a temperature of 1000 to 1050 degrees centigrade not more than that basically that's why it is a solid state process but if you check the blast furnace iron making the temperature goes above 1050 Hmm. that's why you get a molten metal so you can understand in dri process we are maintaining a temperature of 1000 to 1050 degrees centigrade so there is a solid state reduction happening right not liquid that's why we are getting a solid state iron at the end hmm. <clears throat> and there is a limitation also there is a limitation for what kind of limitations actually uh, as i told we are using nmc non metallurgical coal a non metallurgical coal means we are having lot of ash in the coal right and there is a particular fusion temperature is there the ash will fuse at a particular temperature the temperature is above like 11 above 1100 or above 1050 basically or 1080 or 1090 like that so sometimes what happen during during the production of sponge iron if the temperature go above 1100 degree centigrade or above 1050 you can say then the ash fusion temperature will be reach and the ash containing the coal will uh, become fuse and it will stick to the lining of the kiln right that is called ring formation that is called ring formation of the rotary kiln or it is also called accretion formation and due to this formation of fuse mass around this uh, refractory lining the effective diameter of the kiln will reduce hmm. suppose the earlier the diameter is 4 meter even after using a refractory lining if this kind of accretion or ring will form the diameter will reduce to 3 meter or 2 meter like that so what will happen at the end the charged metal cannot move easily it cannot descend down right so that is the point uh anything else anybody want to ask sir mass balance numericals मैंने तुम्हें बोला था ऑलरेडी कि मनीला मैम से पूछना उनको उनका अच्छा होल्ड है उस पर और उसको समझाने के लिए मुझे तो पीपीटी बनाना पड़ेगा ना अभी मैं मैं तो आउट ऑफ स्टेशन हो गया पता है ना ऑलरेडी <laughs> तुम्हें कैसे बताऊं ये क्लास में रहता तो बता देता एटलीस्ट तुम मनीला मैम से पूछ सकते हो उनका अच्छा होल्ड है उस पर हाँ मैम तो स्टेशन में है ओके सर ओके सर सर एक डाउट था पूछो पूछो सर वो डिस्चार्ज एंड से हम लोग एयर को मतलब अंदर की तरफ ब्लो कर रहे हैं तो आ, मतलब वो जहां पे हम लोग फीड कर रहे हैं तो वो एयर कहां से मतलब पास होके फिर बाहर कैसे आएगा कौन सा पाथ में आएगा बाहर एक्चुअली लाइक ब्लास्ट फर्नेस इज अ काउंटर करंट रिएक्टर दिस रोटर किलन इज आल्सो अ काउंटर करंट रिएक्टर मतलब तुम्हारा चार्जिंग एंड से डिस्चार्जिंग एंड तुम्हारा वो जो रॉ मटेरियल से मूव कर रहा है 
पर तुम्हारा जो गैस है ना वो उल्टा डायरेक्शन में मूव कर रहा है फ्रॉम डिस्चार्जिंग टू चार्जिंग तो गैस क्या कर रहा है ऑक्सीजन प्रोवाइड कर रहा है और ऑक्सीजन और तुम टेम्परेचर प्रोवाइड कर रहे हो ठीक है तो टेम्परेचर है ऑक्सीजन है और कोल है तो फिर कम्बशन हो रहा है सो so, यहाँ पे कोल जो नॉन मेटोलॉजिकल कोल है उसका दो काम है इट हेल्प इन द कम्बशन प्रोसेस प्रोवाइड हीट एनर्जी फॉर रिडक्शन ऑल्सो इट एक्ट इज रिड्यूसिंग एज इट सेल्फ समझे तो वो फर्नेस के बाहर चार्ज चार्जिंग एंड से बाहर आएगा ऑब्वियस बात है फिर वहां से जाके वो स्क्रबर वगैरह होगा स्क्रबर में क्लीन क्लीन होके निकल जाएगा फिर बाहर गैस क्लीनिंग सिस्टम यूज करना पड़ेगा और कुछ सर सर क्वेश्चन हाउ सल्फर कंटेंट वेरीज इन मेटल एंड स्लैग along the height of blast furnace Hello? okay fine you mean to ask yeah yeah i i got your point yes sir how sulfur content varies in the blast furnace from top to bottom okay uh, uh varies in metal and slag along the height of the blast furnace it is a blast furnace <laughs> okay the thing is what uh the sulfur content depends upon the temperature right it's mostly depend upon the temperature sulfur can be removed if temperature will be higher and it will be difficult to remove the sulfur if the temperature will be lower right so obviously that means yes, yeah so if you go down into the earth then the temperature is going down again right because the maximum temperature is at the tweer region below if you go to the tweer region you will be having hot right you may have top hot and bottom hot kind of the top hot will be having higher temperature right and bottom hot will be having lower temperature yes sir right so where the temperature will be high the removal will be better where the temperature will be low the removal will be poor in, in this way you can explain it and basically what i basically what happens uh in the hearth we have two things both metal and slag slag will be on the top metal will be uh, in the bottom because of difference in density basically metal is having higher density than slag right so the amount of sulfur in the hot metal depends upon the hearth temperature the entire hearth temperature if if you maintain a higher hearth temperature then sulfur will be present in the slag not metal but if you maintain a low temperature of the hearth then sulfur will be present more more in the metal than compared to the slag i think you got yes, the sir. answer yes sir hmm. but thoda repeat sulfur can be removed actually sulfur removal depends upon the hearth temperature what is the temperature of hearth how much temperature you are maintaining if you are maintaining a higher temperature then sulfur will be more in the slag phase than the metallic phase but if you maintain a low temperature of the hearth then sulfur will be higher in the metallic phase as compared to slag hmm. sir kyu hota hai matlab so higher actually actually each impurity is re requires a particular temperature for its removal right that is the reason one of the reason sulfur needs higher temperature for its removal because sulfur forms calcium sulfide basically the calcium the magnesium they are sulfur scavenger they react with sulfur to form compounds and once the compound forms they will move to the slag phase like calcium sulfide magnesium sulfide if manganese will be there then manganese sulfide can form right that's why sometimes we feed manganese ore into the blast furnace why because it will take care of the sulfur manganese oxide will reduce to manganese and the manganese react with sulfur to form manganese sulfide and this manganese sulfide will go to the slag phase yes sir so another question um, what are the mm -hmm. effects of uh, increased blast temperature on uh, flame temperature and bos gas volume sorry can you repeat Uh, what are the effects of increased blast temperature on flame temperature and bos gas volume 
go gas volume and flame temperature obviously if you increase the hot blast temperature then flame temperature also increase right yes. flame what do you understand by flame flame means in front of two years flame in front of two years flames form right so yes. if you if you provide hot higher hot blast temperature then obviously the flame temperature will be higher and about the volume of the hot blast so for next question was what is your next question what are the effects of increased blast temperature and flame temperature and bose gas volume maybe bose gas volume volume it is a gas right so if it is a gas if the temperature will be higher obviously it will expand more and more so volume will be higher yes sir उसमें रिडक्शन बेटर होगा क्या अगर वॉल्यूम मतलब ज्यादा रहेगा टेम्परेचर के कारण एक्चुअली इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन हाउ मच ऑक्सीजन यू आर प्रोवाइडिंग इन द फर्नेस बिकॉज ऑक्सीजन सी इफ यू सप्लाई एयर ओनली देन मेजोरिटी पार्ट ऑफ द एयर इज नाइट्रोजन नॉट द ऑक्सीजन राइट एंड नाइट्रोजन नेवर टेक पार्ट इन द कम्बेशन प्रोसेस इट इज एनर्ट गैस राइट एंड नाइट्रोजन even if it will not take part in the process it also consume lot of heat why because it will also get heated up to a high temperature so it will consume some heat now right so that is a loss of heat again so if you provide enriched air enriched air means oxygen enriched air means if you provide more oxygen more oxygen means less amount of nitrogen right so obviously combustion will be better heat heat from from you will provide more amount of heat more amount of combustion will be there more amount of carbon monoxide release will be there for better reduction will be there obviously is it okay yes sir or in other way if you say i am supplying high volume of hot blast in this way also you can supply uh, you can say that means i am providing more amount of oxygen into the furnace that is called driving rate of the furnace basically anything else you want to ask sir aur ek thoda aur sir wo uh, agar matlab sir sulfur content ko matlab uh, extract karne hum log lime add karte hain ya fir uh, manganese add karte hain to sir wo manganese yes. sulf sulfide ya calcium sulfide form ho jayega sir agar wo form hoga to wo fuse ho ke matlab furnace ka wall ko to stick kar sakta hai na to wahan pe refractory lining kharab ho sakta hai एक्चुअली uh, ये जो पूछ रहे हो तुम फ्यूज फ्यूज वाला पार्ट तुम ये भूल क्यों जा रहे हो कि तुम्हारा ब्लास्ट फर्नेस में डिफरेंट रीजन में डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टेम्परेचर है सेम टेम्परेचर नहीं है तो तुम्हारा इनिशियली टेम्परेचर लो रहता है फिर नीचे नीचे जाओगे तो टेम्परेचर हाई होगा समझे yes, hmm. इसलिए स्टिक नहीं करता है वो नीचे चला जाता है थोड़ा बहुत तो स्टिक करेगा ही करेगा वो नीचे के पार्ट में इसकी बोश में हर्थ में तो स्टिक करेगा बोश में स्टिक करेगा बट वहां पे स्टिक नहीं करता है तुम्हारा बेसिकली स्टैक पोर्शन में स्टिक नहीं होता है अगर स्टिक होगा दट इज एन इरेगुलरिटी सुने हो गया स्कैब सर पढ़ा है क्या स्कैब स्कैब फॉर्मेशन और वो स्कैफोल्ड फॉर्मेशन चैनलिंग नहीं है वो उसको बोलते हैं स्कैब और स्कैफोल्ड ठीक है उस वो क्या होता है ना तुम्हारा लो सॉपनिंग पॉइंट कंपाउंड फॉर्म होता है और स्टिक कर जाता है या फिर तुम्हारा जो एल्केलीज है वो भी स्टिक कर जाते हैं फर्नेस वॉल पे वहां से ग्रो होने लगता है मटेरियल धीरे धीरे और थोड़ा कोरेक्स प्रोसेस बता दीजिए कोरेक्स कोरेक्स बाद में बताऊंगा ठीक है
जी बा जी बा